in the previous lecture we have started to deal with a very important problem of forced harmonic oscillator and that was actually the problem of amplitude resonance you have seen actually when the frequency of the applied driving force is almost equal to the frequency of uh, the natural frequency of the oscillator then resonance takes place and when you say that resonance is taking place that means amplitude of oscillation is maximum okay and uh, there is a vital problem uh, regarding this amplitude resonance and that is the problem of how we can discuss the sharpness of amplitude resonance although in the, the first lecture on this we have seen a brief account of the concept of sharpness of amplitude resonance but uh, in a quantitative way if you uh, you want to discuss the sharpness of resonance there is there are actually two parameters for it <clears throat> and these parameters are called bandwidth and quality factor okay so bandwidth and quality factor are the parameters in terms of which we can discuss the sharpness of amplitude resonance in quantitative way but uh, before knowing the discussion on sharpness of amplitude resonance in terms of bandwidth you have to know about the power supplied by the driving force to the oscillator because bandwidth will be defined in terms of this uh, power okay so our final aim is to deal with the sharpness of resonance in terms of uh, two parameters the first one is called bandwidth and another is called quality factor but uh, to get a complete and concrete idea of this uh, bandwidth and quality factor in terms of which you will discuss the sharpness of amplitude you have to know about the power supplied by the driving force to the oscillator you know if uh, a driving force is not applied on the oscillator due to the damping force there is a loss of energy actually our oscillator loses energy in each cycle of its oscillation due to the damping resistance but uh, we have seen uh, when we apply a, an external periodic force of particular frequency then this energy lost is compensated by the applied force by the external agency actually that external agency provides energy from outside to the oscillator to maintain its steady state oscillation and in case of steady state oscillation the power lost by the oscillator is just compensated by the driving force and so that there as a whole there is no net loss of energy because loss of energy is compensated by the driving force by supplying energy from outside to the oscillator and so that our oscillator oscillates with a constant amplitude and such oscillation is also called steady state oscillation all these things we have seen in our previous uh, lectures okay so i have mentioned it here you can see i have written when an oscillator is set into forced vibration by an external driving force some energy is dissipated in every cycle due to damping resistance r and to maintain the steady state of the force oscillator this energy loss has to be supplied by the driving force okay and in this short lecture our aim is just to know about uh, uh, the power or the energy given to the oscillator by the driving force 
So, to calculate the value of power supplied by the driving force to the oscillator, we will start from the very definition of power. You know what is power? Power is simply a rate of doing work or you can also say that power of an external agent is defined by energy supplied by the agent per second. So, here power supplied by the driving force means the work done by the driving force or energy provided by the driving force per second. So, if you consider that uh, in a short interval of time dt, dw is the work done by the external agency on our oscillator, then power supplied to the oscillator by the external force or by the driving force will be defined as P equal to dW by dt. But you know from definition of work done that this dW is equal to F dot dr where dr is the elementary displacement ok. And so power will be F dot dr by dt ok. But you know this uh, what is this dr by dt? This is simply velocity of our oscillator. So, power supplied to the oscillator by the driving force may be given as F dot V, where F is the applied periodic force. Okay? Now, if you consider that uh, the angle between the driving force F and the velocity of our oscillator V in general is theta, then from the definition of a scalar product, you can write F dot V equal to F V cos theta, where F and V are actually the magnitude of the driving force and its and velocity of the oscillator. Okay? But if we consider that uh, this force is in the direction of the velocity, it means F is parallel to V, then angle theta between those two vectors will be simply equal to 0. And if theta is 0, what will be this P? You can see this will be F V cos 0, but cos 0 is 1. So, this power will be simply equal to F times P. Here actually we will use this result because in this condition we consider that the velocity of the oscillator is in the direction of the applied periodic force. Okay? Now, uh, what is this F and what is this V? If you know the values of F and V <coughs> at any time t, you can find the instantaneous power supplied by the driving force to the oscillator. You know, during a uh, the harmonic oscillation or <clears throat> you can say the forced harmonic oscillation. We have considered that the applied force may be taken as F equal to F naught cos omega t. At the same time, you can also take this as F naught sin omega t. All these things you have learnt in your previous classes. Okay? But when we consider F equal to F naught cos omega t, then you have learnt in my previous lecture <coughs> that in this very condition, the displacement of the oscillator at any time t, which I have denoted by the symbol x of t, that is given by F naught over z m times sin omega t minus phi. You have seen this expression several times before. Okay. So, I have written it here directly. But for knowing the expression for power, you have to find the velocity and here you know the displacement of the oscillator. So, from definition of velocity, we will, we can find what will be V of t, that is what will be the velocity of our oscillator at any moment t, you can find. You know, uh, in this expression, omega is simply the frequency of our applied force 
and this zm which is called actually the magnitude of the mechanical impedance and this magnitude of mechanical impedance you know this is given by a square root of r square plus m omega minus k over omega whole square okay and here this phi is the phase constant and it is given by tan phi equal to m omega minus k over m sorry minus k over omega over r <coughs> which is very clear to this figure you can see in this figure i have shown that this resistive constant r is on the real axis okay and uh, the reactance m omega minus k by omega is along the imaginary axis okay so it is written as i times m omega k by omega and this uh, line uh, represents then the vector gm which is the mechanical impedance okay <coughs> now as i have told you earlier uh, we know the expression for displacement x but for finding the expression for power we have to know the expression for velocity so now you can find the velocity of your oscillator at any moment t you know v of t is given by dx of t by dt but what is x x is defined here so let us dif differentiate it you know f not over omega zm this is a constant factor so i have uh, taken it at is okay and so we have to differentiate this sin omega t minus phi with respect to t and that will be simply equal to omega times cos omega t minus phi so v of t is given by f not over omega zm times omega cos omega t minus phi so you can see this omega and this omega will cancel out and velocity of our oscillator at time t will be simply given by v of t equal to f not over zm times cos omega t minus phi okay now you know the expression for the applied driving force which is f equal to f not cos omega t and you have also find the expression for the instantaneous velocity of your oscillator okay so now substituting these values in this equation 1 you can find the instantaneous value of power supplied to the oscillator by the driving force this is instantaneous power it means this is the value of power at any moment t so i have written here p of t which refers that this is power supplied to the oscillator by the driving force at any time t and that is simply equal to f times v but f is f not cos omega t and what is this v you know you have seen in equation 3 that v is equal to what this is f not over zm times cos omega t minus phi okay so uh, the expression for instantaneous power supplied by the driving force to the oscillator is given by f not square over zm times cos omega t times cos omega t minus phi okay this is the instantaneous value of power okay since power depends on time so we actually in practice define the average value of power but you know average is always defined for some interval here since power is a function of time so there will be a there will be an time interval interval for which power will be defined in general in this case we take the average value of the power for a complete cycle of the driving force for a complete cycle 
and when you say a complete cycle it means the time interval during which this f will vary like this f was f not cos omega t okay here t is zero and here this uh, this t will be equal to capital t here t is zero this is your complete cycle from this point a to this point b okay and for this complete cycle we will define the average value of the power supplied to the oscillator okay and you know from the idea of calculating average if you know the instantaneous value of a physical quantity the average power supplied by the driving force to the oscillator in a complete cycle that is between the time t equal to 0 and t equal to capital T where this capital T will be equal to 2 pi by omega this is called time period and uh, this average power will be what this will be integral of p of t dt between the limits 0 and capital T divided by the total time interval which is given by integral of dt for the limits 0 to t okay but uh, this integral of dt will be t and when you will put the limits that will be simply capital T so this average power is given by 1 over t times integral from 0 to capital T f not square by zm cos omega t times cos omega t minus phi dt here the value of p of t has been substituted from this equation 4 ok now uh, this is very this is a very simple integration you can do it but for your convenience I have actually done this integration but uh, there is no need to do the uh, each and every step of this mathematics because this is a simple integration and you can write uh, directly the values of the integrals okay now let us try to evaluate this integral since uh, this f naught square over zm is a constant factor so let it come out of this integral and so uh, the expression for average p will be f naught square over t times zm times integral 0 to t cos omega t times cos omega t minus phi let us expand this cos omega t minus phi by the well known formula and you can write it as cos omega t times cos phi plus sin omega t times sin phi ok now multiply by this cos omega t to the two terms inside this bracket and uh, apply the integral uh, on each term so the average value of power will be given by f naught square over zm into t times cos phi cos phi is time independent so it is outside of the integral and the first term will be cos omega t times cos omega t so i have written here cos square omega t but in second term when you take this uh, sin phi as a constant factor the remaining uh, functions will be cos omega t times sin omega t dt okay now we will separately evaluate the two integrals in RHS of this equation 4 for your convenience. So let us try to evaluate this integral, integral 0 to t cos square omega t dt. Okay? You know uh, from trigonometry that uh, cos 2 theta this equals 2 cos square theta minus 1 and so 2 cos square theta will be 1 plus cos 2 theta and so that you can say cos square theta this is 1 plus cos 2 theta 
divided by two. Okay. So using this formula, you can write uh, cos square omega t is equal to one over two one plus cos two omega t at the place of theta. Here is omega t. Okay. I think you have under clearly understand. Now let us impose this integral on the two terms separately. So this result can be written as one over two times integral zero to t dt a plus integral zero to t cos two omega t dt. Okay. Now the first integral will be what? This will be simply capital T because integral of dt will be t. And when you will substitute the limits, this will be t minus zero, which is t. Okay. And cos integral of cos two omega t uh, from zero to capital T. That is for a complete cycle. You can write its value directly. This integral will be zero. Actually, cos function and sine function both are periodic function, and you know. Sin n pi, sin n pi, sin. <coughs> sorry, sin n theta d theta zero to two pi. This is zero, and cos n theta. D theta zero to two pi is zero. Okay, because this uh, these are periodic functions. You can also see from this graph. For a complete cycle, you can see this is just the graphical plot of cosine function. Okay, and this is positive. This is positive, and this part is negative. So when you will integrate it. For a complete cycle, that integral will be equal to area under the curve and this time axis, and uh, this will be zero because the positive area and the negative area are equal. So whenever sine function or cosine function is integrated for a complete cycle, the result is zero. So this second integral will be simply zero. But uh, I have uh, actually simplified it. You can check it. You know. Integral of cos 2 omega t. This will be 1 over 2 omega sine 2 omega t, and limits are 0 to capital T. But capital T is equal to 2 pi over omega. Okay, so this will be 1 over 2 times t plus 1 over 2 omega. Now let us substitute the limits at the place of this small t. We will write. Sine two omega into two pi by omega, a minus. Now we will put the lower limit zero, so this will be sine zero. Now this omega and this omega will cancel out, and you know this sine four pi and minus sine zero. We know that sine n pi is zero. Sine pi, sine two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi, all are zero. So this is zero minus zero, and that will be zero. So this second term will be zero, and so I have told you earlier, whenever you will integrate the sine function or the cosine function for a complete cycle, the integral is always zero. Okay. So uh, without doing this calculation, you can directly write that this second integral is zero. Okay. And since it is zero. So the integral of cos square omega t dt from zero to capital T, this will be simply one over two into t. Okay. Now, uh, what will be the value of the second integral in this equation? That is integral of uh, sine omega t into cos omega t uh, from zero to t. Now let us try to see this. You know, if we will multiply this expression by two and also divide it by two, the result will remain same. But you know, 
टू साइन ओमेगा टी इन टू कॉस ओमेगा टी दैट कैन बी रिटर्न एज साइन टू ओमेगा टी सो दिस इंटीग्रल कैन बी रिटर्न एज वन ओवर टू टाइम्स इंटीग्रल जीरो टू टी साइन टू ओमेगा टी डी टी बट आई हैव जस्ट टोल्ड यू दैट इफ यू विल इंटीग्रेट द साइन फंक्शन और द कोसाइन फंक्शन फॉर ए कंप्लीट साइकिल द वैल्यू ऑफ इंटीग्रल विल बी जीरो ओके बिकॉज साइन इंटीग्रल ऑफ साइन एन थेटा फ्रॉम जीरो टू टू पाए इज जीरो ओके एंड फ्रॉम ग्राफ इट इज ऑल्सो सीन इफ यू आर प्लॉटिंग द साइन फंक्शन फॉर ए कंप्लीट साइकिल देन द दिस इफ देयर इज टी इक्वल टू जीरो हेयर एंड हेयर देयर इज टी इक्वल टू टी एंड ऑन दिस I have um, written साइन omega t. So half cycle is positive and half cycle is negative. And so the integral means area under this curve. So positive area will cancel the negative area and this integral will be zero. So you can simply say that this integral is zero. Okay. Now see this equation four in RHS. the value of this first integral is equal to half t and the value of this second integral is equal to zero so now let us put this value here in equation 4 and after substituting that you can see the average power supplied to the oscillator by the driving force in a complete cycle or a time more than one cycle that will be equal to f not square over zm times t into cos phi into half of t okay now this t and this t will cancel out and so the average value of power p is f not square over 2 zm cos phi okay f not square <coughs> over 2 zm Into cos phi. Actually, uh, this phi is the phase difference between the applied force and uh, the oscillator, and this is actually called power factor. Cosine of phi is called power factor, and you can see the value of this average power. Also depends on this power factor. During resonance, when you talk about the amplitude resonance, this phi is equal to zero. During resonance, we have learned earlier that when resonance takes place, this phi is zero. And if phi is zero, cos phi will be one, which is its maximum value. So you can say. that when resonant amplitude resonance takes place in that very condition our oscillator gains maximum power from the applied force or in other words you can say that the applied force provides maximum power to the oscillator during the amplitude resonance okay and let us see i have discussed it here as you can see Uh, if phi is equal to zero, cos phi is one, and so p will be actually equal to f not square over two j m. Okay, but if uh, phi is equal to pi by two, phi is equal to pi by two, then cos phi is equal to zero. Okay, and so no power will be supplied by the driving force to the oscillator in this very condition so when this phase constant phi is 90 degree no power is gained by the oscillator from the driving force okay actually this situation is just like the electrical lcr circuit in case of lcr circuit 2 if you have studied the lcr circuit in your course on electricity you have seen during resonance the maximum power is supplied to the circuit okay but in l circuit or in c circuit 
that is when there is a circuit of pure inductor or pure capacitor then phi is equal to 90 degree and in that condition no power is absorbed by the circuit and so uh, in that condition current is called wattless current okay Sim situation is just like that when this phi is 90 degree no power will be absorbed okay now you can see what will be the maximum value of the power absorbed by our oscillator okay as uh, it is obvious from this equation a that in this equation a f naught is a constant so this the value of this average power will be determined in terms of the power factor cos phi and the magnitude of the mechanical impedance zm and you can see the form of this equation if cos phi is maximum then power will be maximum but when zm is minimum then power will be maximum because it is in denominator so to maximize the average power you have to maximize cos phi but minimize zm to make p maximum zm should be zm should be minimum but cos phi should be maximum so let us impose this condition to get the maximum average power i have written you can see that p is equal to p max when cos phi is maximum that is 1 and zm is equal to zm minimum okay now let us try to see what will be the minimum value of this zm okay and for this let us start with the expression for zm which we have learnt in our previous class you have seen that this zm is given by r square plus m omega minus k by omega whole square whole to the power half and you can see since this term m omega minus k by omega this is a perfect square when this term will be minimum then zm will be minimum for a given r okay and what will be the minimum value of this term that will be simply zero because it is a perfect square and you know the minimum value of a perfect square will be zero is zero because even when m omega minus k by omega is negative after squaring that will become positive so minimum value of any perfect square is always equal to zero so to get the minimum value of zm you have to take the minimum value of m omega minus k by omega and the minimum value of m omega minus k by omega is equal to zero okay so for finding the maximum value of p that is maximum value of power supplied to the oscillator you have to put cos phi equal to 1 in this equation a and zm equal to r after substituting these two values we will have the expression for the maximum power absorbed by the oscillator from the driving force and so that you can see that this p max is equal to f naught square over 2r okay and as i have told you earlier <clears throat> this will happen during resonance because when a resonance takes place then you know omega is equal to omega naught then resonance takes place now uh, you have seen earlier that this k is equal to m omega naught square okay <clears throat> m omega naught square so let us try to find what is this zm 
when resonance takes place, that is omega is equal to omega naught. You can see this will be R square plus M omega naught because during resonance <coughs> omega is equal to omega naught and minus k over omega but k is m omega naught square m omega naught square and divided by omega but omega is now omega naught and whole square whole to the power half okay so you can see this omega naught will cancel out and your result is what this is r square plus m omega naught minus m omega naught whole square whole to the power half and this will cancel out and so this is simply equal to r and uh, you have written it here so you can easily say that zm will be equal to r or maximum power will be absorbed by our oscillator only when resonance will take place so during amplitude resonance power supplied to the oscillator is maximum and what is that maximum value that maximum value is equal to f not square over 2r okay so this was uh, this is all about the idea of power supplied by the driving force to the oscillator but as i have told you earlier that uh, to know about this power is uh, has an specific region actually getting this power our oscillator oscillates with a constant amplitude and it is its a state is called std state std state okay and in terms of this power in the forthcoming lecture we will define a very important parameter which is called bandwidth and bandwidth is a parameter in terms of which we can define we can discuss the sharpness of amplitude resonance in a quantitative manner okay so the importance of this lecture lies uh, in discussing the sharpness of amplitude resonance okay and that that concept will be dealt in the my forthcoming video okay so definitely after uh, watching this video you must watch the next video for getting the complete concept of sharpness of amplitude resonance okay thank you very much